NJ Transit slowly exiting a pandemic tunnel that saw ridership drop 80% for rail by half for buses and fare box receipts tank. That gave the beleaguered agency a chance to install the positive train control safety braking system on time and hire a full roster of new engineers. More than 3,100 transit staffers have gotten COVID vaccinations, but in budget hearings today, lawmakers demanded better. I'm saying there's a lot less services and a lot less riders, and yet expenses are going up through the roof. NJ Transit's $2.65 billion spending plan doesn't raise fares, but it predicts ridership revenues will still be down $400 million next fiscal year, about 40 percent, and could take four years to fully recover if people return to the office full time. But peak hour service still isn't fully restored. As you look as we restore service, become more reliable, cleaner and efficient, we'll be drawing those people back. There's nothing out there that supports that. What may be happening is a permanent shift in ridership where literally people don't go in five days a week. Advocates point out the agency can't keep wheels rolling on fares alone. It'll still depend on money transferred from state subsidies, the Clean Energy Fund, and New Jersey Turnpike revenues over the next couple of years. It continues to count on capital to operating transfers and will rely on massive one-shot infusions of federal aid, more than $3 billion. I think the real key will be the money that's coming from the turnpike up to a maximum of $525 million a year in the outer years. I think that, you know, people talk about finding a dedicated funding source. I certainly think that is one of them. You can't rely on turnpike monies because that's going to be a variable as to how many people use turnpike and the tolls are high enough as they are. Um, you have to make it independent. Asked why they're still buying diesel vehicles, agency officials said they'll purchase all electric powered when they've built up enough infrastructure to plug them in. On another track, transportation advocates want to see more focus on people who need public transit to live, not just commute to New York. Look at the agency service and talk about um, reallocating and repurposing um, transit so that it meets our life needs, not just commuting and working needs. And this is especially important for the residents of New Jersey, lower income residents. Meanwhile, lawmakers accuse the Motor Vehicle Commission of closing too many agencies for too long for COVID quarantines. And while many transactions have moved online, lawmakers said it's not user friendly. Agency boss Sue Fulton explained. We're focused on getting the vaccines done so we can stop the closures, so we can increase the capacity in person. Meanwhile, we've got to take the people who are using all those in-person appointments and move them online so there is space in the agency. Listen, once COVID-19 is over, everybody's vaccinated and there's not a concern about in-person uh, visits and in-person transactions, we're gonna have a lot more possibility to operate. We can't talk about COVID-19 being over. We don't know when it's going to be over. So whether we need to think about having a second shift, a third shift, we have brought these issues up to the front office as well. Something has got to get done. We can't reinvent the wheel here. There's got to be something that we can do in order to make sure that people are getting what they need. Fulton said she can't add more shifts because she doesn't have enough staff. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News.